hot price. It's going to be fine. It's all fine. I got tips and tricks. <laughs> Me when I lie. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fucking game pro over here. Or Who did that? That was just a whole different magazine, right? Tips and tricks. I don't know. So Yeah, that's right. You grew up after. Neil, I'm 14. Print media. <laughs> Forgot. No, I would get PlayStation official magazine. You're like, it's all GameFacts.com. No, I, I would get the console wars propaganda. From the PlayStation magazine. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you, were you still, were you getting it early enough when like Adam Warren was just like drawing a bunch of like babes in it? I don't recall babes. Okay. Because like Adam, because they would hire Adam Warren, a uh, really great illustrator, comic creator, um, to draw like like the babes from uh jet moto right in the magazine in oh the- i was i recognized this art style uh i was well after this okay like way way after i'm a big fan of adam warren he does a he does a really great series called empowered i will say there's a wipeout three slash gran turismo two cover here that goes absolutely fucking bananas hell yeah is that an adam like, warren cover i think so because i just typed in adam warren playstation magazine so i have to assume I gotta see this. I mean, I can just do. You want me to screen share again? Adam Warren? No. So also, it says tell me safe search blurring is on. Are you, is this the one? Oh, this is the one with the with the yeah the wipeout babe blowing bubble gum. Yeah, that's exactly. This is exactly what I was describing. What I was picturing. Yeah, exceptional head. stuff. I like yeah. it a lot. It's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 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 good at drawing stuff. But yeah, like it also says PlayStation Two first game revealed, so it's a little early for me. Probably that fireworks game, right? Fantavision or whatever it was called. Probably, yeah. yeah. Remember when that was like the game? Rumble Racing was Rumble Racing a launch title? Uh, it was two thousand one. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's it close. was. So that's it was early, if close. not a launch title. Sure. Uh, yeah. This SSX tricky one is also just fucking awesome. <laughs> this is Adam Warren. It's definitely also Adam Warren because it looks just like the other one. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing. So it looks like he's in a lot of uh, uh, SSX art that was not necessarily for the magazine. Yeah. Also, is he like? It's it's incredible to me that a guy drawing art like this did make a living drawing art that art that you could show at your job. <laughs> you know what I mean? I feel like if he was if he was getting big now, this would all be naked. Um, he's done plenty of that. He's getting into some stuff. He's not. He's not getting. <laughs> he's not getting into it. So this is. He's isn't been a, into some stuff. So, you just go with me on this ride here. He he's done this uh, series of uh, graphic novels. They are released uh-huh. as graphic novels. There's some one shots too. The series is called Empowered. And I'm just. I'm now looking at a pinned tweet from 2016 okay. that does describe it as a sexy superhero comedy, except when it isn't. Yes. So. So this guy knows what he's doing. It's fine. So the way that that. That series, if I'm remembering correctly, I am like two or three volumes behind at this point, I think. I, he might have even finished the series. Um, but I read up to like volume seven or eight. And the way that it started was he was just doing these like super heroine in peril pinup commission drawings for people, right? Sure. Because somebody was just like... It's a living. It's a Yeah, and that's a fetish, <laughs> right? There is, if you... This, this was all over Tumblr for a while. Right. Oh, the, this is Tumblr core big time. The, the heroin in peril genre of internet content. Anyway, and to uh, keep himself entertained while doing this, he started turning them into like short vignettes, like one or two page comics. So like if you read the first volume of Empowered, like the first half of it are just these like one or two page like comics about this uh, heroine named Empowered who has a super suit that gives her like crazy strength. But the suit, as soon as it gets torn, she loses all of her powers and gets tied up and whatever else, right? right. It, yeah, it jumps to the fetish part. Yeah, and the suit is like <laughs> the suit is like like thin is like it's like bayonetta, like very easily torn is the whole point. But like as he's writing these things, he starts developing it into like this like a like real characters and doing like real world building and uh, just builds like this in, like this huge mythology out of all of this and actually tells some like extremely heartfelt stories about this woman and her boyfriend who was a henchman for hire. Like it 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 becomes a truly great like emotional series and the sex stuff like falls off pretty quickly honestly you know okay yeah it's a good it's like a it's one of the books that i recommend i'm like look this is a little not now perverts i'm about to make (laughs) literature it's a little racy at the beginning 
And that does carry through, right? Like, there's an element of that present throughout the series. But, like... Also, it does appear that he's on volume 11. Okay. I looked over at my shelf. I have up to volume 8, so I am a few behind. And I think that, like, either volume 9 or 10 is going for, like, $150 for some reason. Seems like a lot. I don't know what that's about. There must be some, some hardcore pornography in that one. <laughs> that's the horny <laughs> one. <laughs> he was like, my prestige is volume 8. <laughs> Anyway, I think he also This is going to be fucking crazy. <laughs> I think I think he releases it all online for free now as like a webcomic as well because he's so far into the published books, right? That he's releasing chapters online like right. as a webcomic for free. So, people should check it out. It's a it's a good story again. And and none of the sex is like super graphic. There's no like outright nudity. It's you know, it's it's more than conquest, less than poison ivy new seduction. So I had a really funny thing happen related to that the other day. Well, rather, I saw a funny thing happen. I didn't do it. I was sure. watching a, uh, I was watching a video. Yeah. That was a VOD of a stream that somebody did, playing a game called Cine Two Nerdle Battle. <laughs> and all you need to know about what that is is <laughs> it gives you a movie, right? Okay. And then you have to name like the director, the writer, the cinematographer, or an actor in that movie. Okay. A na- or name a movie that connects the two, I should say. So, like, if it was Get Out and you said Nope, it would give a bunch of connections, right? Okay. And then the next person has to give an answer that connects something to Nope, sure. etc. And there's a finite number of links you can use, whatever. Um, in any case, so I'm watching this video, and when your opponent tries to use a movie that doesn't have any connections, so it doesn't work, yeah. it pops up what the title of that movie is. And the connection point was Jamie Presley. And the guy wrote Poison Ivy. And then he wrote Poison Ivy 2. And then he quit. (laughs) And he was like, you were one away. (laughs) (laughs) Almost, man. Just keep trying the Poison Ivy movies. Oh, you almost had it, buddy. (laughs) It was so funny. (laughs) And I'm like, that's only funny to me. (laughs) Like, having all of the required knowledge of, I'm watching this video at this time, and I saw this bit happen related to this person. I bet they were a listener. (laughs) All right. Okay. <laughs> we're playing we're having fun with the with the Discord soundboard. Okay. All right, man. I should Corey, we should get down to business, right? It doesn't feel festive, so we're gonna try to make it festive. We find ourselves once again at the uh the holidays, right? Yeah, I guess I did yeah. jump the gun in saying that, but that's how I personally feel. You're not feeling too festive this year? Uh well if I look out my window, uh it's basically entirely grass and uh. it's it was like eight degrees yesterday. And I live in Canada. It's supposed to be colder. It's supposed to be uh, snowing, right? Yeah, and it's sort of none of that. And uh, that's a big... I'm not even a particularly like Christmas-oriented holiday season kind of guy. Sure. But um, boy, does that go a long way into making you feel something other than passive existential dread. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're not feeling that magic of the holiday spirit no. of the Especially holiday not season the christmas movies i've watched so yeah. far are like silent night 2012 and jingle all the way to jesus what are you doing man a podcast we should watch a sonic <laughs> christmas blast right oh we should watch fucking mortal kombat conquest we should watch mortal kombat conquest speaking of listeners may remember i think it was like two years ago i um subjected you all to Let's just call it Christmas-themed Mortal Kombat Conquest fan fiction that I wrote in a, a very special episode of MK PodQuest called Seasons Beatings. Oh, guess what? I'm back with more bullshit. Oh, you thought we were done? <laughs> <laughs> with bullshit? You thought we were rebranding away from bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> Never. First, I just want to say, like, let's let's um, let's acknowledge the uh, Christmas miracle of us releasing two episodes in one month, as opposed to the basically one episode a month we've been doing for half the year. And let's all gather around that fire, right? Get cozy and uh, listen to a nice holiday themed Mortal Kombat Conquest fan fiction that I stayed up until eleven thirty writing. Happy Jeff Rosenberg socket. <laughs> And Corey, you have nothing, you don't know anything about this. We were planning on doing something else, and I was like, no, I have an idea. 
for a thing and I'm gonna Yeah, I don't know what this is. I actually only just remembered a second ago that the initial season's beatings was essentially fan fiction. <laughs> I'd kind of forgotten what exactly it was. So oh, yeah. yeah, well it's been a couple of years. And then what last year we did Sonic Christmas Blast. We weren't about to do that again this year. That would be a really weird decision to just be like we oh every Christmas we watch Sonic Christmas Blast. Well, I think we talked about this on that episode. Every year I do watch Sonic Christmas Blast. Right, but it'd be weird to do that and then podcast about it again. Well, maybe next year on our new show. Anyway, Corey, I'm not going to give away the title of this one because it gets dropped in the midst of the story, right? Isn't it Seasons Beatings 2? This is not Seasons Beatings 2. I did not go jingle all the way to with my naming conventions. Also, this is going to be tough because I don't know if people can hear. This one's my, called the New Testament. My voice is kind of kind of fucked and I've got um, like nine pages of shit to read. So, well, eight and a half. You didn't have to write that much, but you you went off. I had to write. I had to wrap the story up. I have no idea how long this is going to take to read. It might take ten minutes. It might take it might half take an hour. Yeah, we'll yeah. see. But I think uh, again, everyone, gather around the fire. I think what it hinges on is how much am I going to interrupt you? <laughs> gather your loved ones around the Alexa. Um, Alexa, play MK Podcast. Does that work? I don't know. Hold on, Alexa, play <laughs> the podcast MK Podcast. I'm praying. Nope, dude. that is not it at all. Alexa, stop it. Okay, I'm going to try one more thing. Sure. Alexa, find directions to Wendy's. <laughs> I don't have an Alexa. <laughs> Gather your family around the smart speaker and uh, <laughs> cuddle up this. Uh, I, I rec- Also, I recommend listening to this on Christmas. With your Christmas family. morning. Cups of coffee, gifts exchanging, this nonsense going on in the back. You know, you know. Yeah. Listen as not closely as possible. <laughs> All right. We open on a cool winter evening in Zhuzhen, where once again the city has been decorated in all manner of gold ribbons, pine wreaths, and bushes of all size. But of course, the largest and most well-decorated Zhuzhen Miss Bush has been set up in the courtyard of Rayland Imports. Fuck, I forgot the bush thing. <laughs> Yeah, I almost did too. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? I was literally at first, I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Taja, how am I supposed to get any training done with this giant Zhuzhenmus monstrosity in the way? Asks Ciro as Taja walks around the festive shrubbery, fixing the ribbons and garland here and there. Come on, Ciro. Zhuzhenmus only comes once a year. Now help me get the ladder so we can place the decoration at the top. Taja Rayland holds imports, up. It's more like Garland imports, right? <laughs> hey, yo. <laughs> okay, that's enough of that. That's Taja, enough of me doing that for 45 minutes. <laughs> Taja holds up a large glowing sphere. Where did you find that? Ciro asks. Out by the lake. I was taking my daily walk to visit the grave of my one true love, Tomas, when this big orb just fell out of the sky. It's the biggest bola ball I've ever seen. And it's funny. The weather was so gloomy this morning, but as soon as I picked up this orb, the clouds parted and the sun came out. It was a Zhuzhenmus miracle. Oh, this? I got it from my orb guy. <laughs> <laughs> sure, a miracle, says Sue, rolling his eyes. If that thing could really control the weather, we'd have a white Zhuzhenmus for once. Anyway, I'll get the letter. <laughs> <laughs> if that thing could really control the weather, we'd have a white president for once, says <laughs> Ciro. <laughs> He's talking about snow, all right? Chill. <laughs> no, but I know, but the tone of voice you said it in, like, sounded like a guy who was about to ruin you shit, All right. <clears throat> okay. I wish we could have a Zhuzhenmus party. I always get so lonely this time of year, especially when I think about everything we've lost over the past few years. Taja reminisces. Yeah, like my brother, Kung Lao's girlfriend, Jen, Kung Lao's other girlfriend, Lori, your boyfriend, Tomas, like three or four bar maidens that I totally wanted to nail. I get the point, Ciro. We've all lost so much. Taja climbs the ladder, orb in hand, when suddenly the doors to the courtyard burst open as Kung Lao is gripped in battle against Shang Tsung. Stop it, Shang. You know we're forbidden to fight until the next Mortal Kombat. You fool, <laughs> says Shang. You know the. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having a great time. This you makes know. me wish I had written something. <laughs> you fool. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
you fool. Don't you know it's been raining for several days? <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know the other so guys. You know the other guys. And now the... my throat's all stuffed. <laughs> You know the Elder Sorry. Gods take the week of Zhuzhen Miss off. There's nobody to enforce the rules. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you know they're on fucking sabbatical. <laughs> In a fight that drags out just long enough, Kung Lao and Shang Tsung circle the decorated shrub, trading blows as Taja teeters at the top of the ladder with the orb, while Ciro holds it steady. Suddenly, when a, with an eruption of fire, Raiden appears as if from nowhere. <laughs> Fuck. Raiden appears as if from nowhere. Beating around the bush, are we? The Dude, Thunder that's God. really good. <laughs> Neil, that's really good. He would say that shit. The Thunder God exclaims, the booming entrance startling everyone, causing Ciro to tip the ladder and Taja to drop the orb in order to steady herself. The orb falls to the ground as if in slow motion, all eyes watching as it hits the stone floor of the courtyard. Can I make a prediction? Yeah. This is surely the orb from the Defenders of the Realm verse. Mm. This is my prediction. All eyes watching as the stone as it hits the stone floor of the courtyard and bounces. A look of realization comes across Shang Tsung's face. The Warrior King, he whispers as oh he my lunges God. for the was orb. Was that really the timing of the reveal? <laughs> yes, it was. Dude, because right when you said orb, I was like, I bet it's the orb. And then you kept talking about the orb, and I was like, I should say it's the orb. And then... <laughs> Raiden, in his own moment of realization, shouts to Kung Lao, Kung Lao, punt it! Kung Lao kicks the <laughs> orb like a red rubber playground ball, sending it ricocheting off the wall and bouncing high up into the open air. Unfortunately, Kung Lao's boot wasn't laced tight enough, and the kick was so hard it sends his boot flying over the walls of the trading post. Oh no, my only pair, Kung Lao exclaims as his flying boot disappears from sight. <laughs> Fuck, these are Doc Martens! <laughs> Goal! exclaims Raiden as he unleashes a lightning bolt, striking the airborne orb and shattering it into as many pieces as I have ideas for, which all fly away in different locations that are again <laughs> tied to the numbers of ideas I'm able to come up with and write about before we have to record this thing. Dude, you were on fucking fire yesterday. <laughs> but this one was of them, all yesterday? More or less. Yeah, I had notes. Dude, but... you, were, you were fucking firing on all cylinders. Well, we'll see. <laughs> One of the short, one of the uh, shards definitely flies through the window into Jen's old bedroom. <laughs> you fool! Shouts Shang Tsung. Do you know what you've done? Yes, says Raiden. I've kept the most powerful orb in the universes out of your vile hands, sorcerer. I can still sense its power. It longs to be reassembled. The orb will be mine! Shang shouts as he races out of the trading post. Raiden, what was all of that about? Asks Kung Lao. That, my friend, was the Warrior King's orb. An artifact from another universe with the power to manipulate the weather, among other things. In the wrong hands, it can be truly dangerous. Well, the power it, to manipulate the weather, which was plot relevant moments ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, good thing we destroyed it then, says Taja. Although now I don't know what I'll put at the top of our Zhuzhen, Miss Bush. I'm going to go get that piece that went into Jen's bedroom. I miss her so much, says Kung Lao heading up inside and up the stairs. Also, I have spelled Jen's name like 17 different ways. Well, in so this did the document. show. Like not literally, but like ideologically, I feel like the show was playing it pretty uh fast and loose with yes. that even wrote, though it wasn't, it like it felt like it was. Jen, I miss you so much. Kung Lao whispers as he opens her bedroom door. By the way, Bro, he might he might miss Jen. Previous sentence, I spelled it J-E-N-N. -N. This time, I spelled it G-E-N. Right next to each other. <laughs> okay, Jen, I missed you he, he so had much. Two different, he had two different Jens. Two Jens, yeah, no waiting. Uh, oh. <laughs> Kung Lao whispers as he opens her bedroom door. But the sadness quickly turns to surprise, then anger, as a figure steps out of the shadows of her room, holding the piece of the orb. Who's it going to be? Where am I? The man asks in a familiar voice, as a familiar face is revealed. It's the Prince of Cinderella. Ciro, how did you beat me up here? And when did you cut your hair? Kung Lao asks. Who's Ciro? Says the Wait. man. I'm Detective John Keller. And where am I? One minute I was fighting in the Kumite, and the next minute I'm here. The oh. Kumite? <laughs> What's that? Asks Kung Lao. <laughs> I haven't even seen this movie yet. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I don't even know what the joke is. 
Kumite was once an honorable tournament for the best fighters to prove themselves. But now I'm afraid it has simply become a blood sport. Four. <laughs> the dark Kumite. <laughs> I don't know what kind of games you're playing, sorcerer, but your tricks won't work on me. Kung Lao lunges at the Ciro lookalike, and holy shit, it is an incredible fight. They are flipping all over the place and running up the walls <laughs> Picture and shit. Picture the coolest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> it rules. Hearing the commotion, the rest of the combat crew run inside and up the stairs. Ciro, Taja, and Raiden burst into Jin's room, where Kung Lao and Detective Keller are locked in battle. Raiden teleports between them, putting an end to the fisticuffs. Jingling each other's bells, are we? He exclaims. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's Shang or Quan Chi. It's someone posing as Siru to steal the piece of the orb and rifle through my dead girlfriend Jen's possessions, Kung Lao says frantically. Well, I do see the resemblance, Raiden remarks, looking back and forth between Siru and Detective Keller. And you say he had a piece of the orb? This is worse than I thought. What do you mean? asks somebody. It doesn't matter who. <laughs> well, as I said, the orb isn't from our world. In fact, what do you legend- mean? Ask the audience. <laughs> I'm just somebody. You're somebody in the room. In ask fact- Derek. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, legend has it that the orb tends to bounce between worlds in different realities, causing chaos. Perhaps when I broke the orb, the pieces tore open holes to other realities the orb has been to. Places that share some sort of connection to our world. Hold on. I know of the different realms, but it sounds like you're describing something outside our perception of reality, Raiden, says Kung Lao. Look, says Raiden, I don't know any simpler way of saying it except that our universe is only one of many in existence. You see, Kung Lao, we live in a multiverse of badness. That's the title, by the way. God, even MK Podquest can't help but succumb to the multiverse, <laughs> Trent. We fell off. L ratio. <laughs> yeah, topical, because boy, were we talking a lot about multiverses and shit on the last episode. We were, we were talking a lot of shit a week ago. <laughs> yeah, right. Okay, but how do I get back home? I'm supposed to infiltrate Death Row to fight in an underground or tournament or something on Wednesday, says Keller. Uh, that's the guy from Blood to Pour. You, you get it. I, uh, yeah, okay. I got it. Yeah, Says how do we get blood this sport? <laughs> we just call yeah. him blood sport. Yeah, how do we get this handsome stranger back home? Says Ciro. I don't need the competition with the local ladies. Maybe if we collect all the pieces, we can put the orb back together and then send Keller home. Says Taja. Worth a try. Raiden shrugs, taking the piece of the orb from Keller. The orb wants to be reassembled, much like the Kami Dogo want to be reunited. The pages of the Dao De Jan want to be collected. Or whatever. What was it called? In that wasn't the Dao De Jan. That's the real book. Uh, fuck the. I don't know. No, it is the Dao De Jan. The Old Testament. Yeah, the orb wants to be reassembled, much like the Kami Dogu. No edits. Want to be reunited. <laughs> the pages of the Dao De Jan, or whatever that book from the comics are, want to be collected, or whatever. That and was the, it. And the swords of Ilkhan want to be united too. I think. Honestly, it's been a while, but that feels like a pretty standard Mortal Kombat artifact trope, right? They're going to come up with a new bit for those. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, asked Kung Lao. <laughs> <laughs> Looks dead down the barrel with a camera. <laughs> Get a load of this guy. <laughs> Just take this what, piece and go on down. What the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> Just take this piece and go hunt it, and go hunt down more sh- orb shards. It's 10 p.m. and Neil is getting tired, says Raiden. Cut to the forest. Kung Lao, Taja, and Ciro are hot on the trail of another piece of the orb. Let's say the shard they have glows with light and blinks faster and faster the closer they get. That feels like that's within the show's budget. Also, Kung Lao is still missing a boot. As the piece of the orb flashes faster and faster, they hear commotion. Join my army, Red Dragon. Never. Your army provokes violence. Martial arts should only ever be used in self-defense or to make money on TV or in the movies. The combat crew ascend a hill to see Scorpion locked in battle with... Takeda? Kung Lao exclaims. How can this be? Ciro says, it must be another universe's version of Takeda. He must have the piece of the orb. The crew watch as Scorpion and his henchmen battle it out with Takeda who nimbly evades Scorpion's girthy serpent spear while also beating the shit out of several of Scorpion's henchmen. 
Man, this battle dome is so realistic, but why am I fighting somebody in a scorpion costume? I'm supposed to be facing off against superstar Ho Sung Pak. God, I fucking knew it. God, <laughs> the second he showed up, I was like, this is the WMAC Masters bit, and it was. I can fucking sense it in my bones. <laughs> I'm right here, exclaimed superstar Ho Sung Pak as he runs into view. <laughs> I guess this is now a team I have a, battle. I have a really important question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Are you able to call him Superstar Ho Sung Pak every time? Well, just this version, okay? <laughs> yeah, but every time. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. We'll see. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny if you are. <laughs> uh, I guess this is now a team battle. Let's take these guys out. The two martial artists beat the shit out of Scorpion and his henchmen. Great work, Superstar says the Takeda lookalike. Stay in school and off drugs, kids says Superstar Ho Sung Pak. <laughs> Takeda, Kung Lao exclaims as he races down the hill to greet his old friend. Who's Takeda? My name is Chris Casamasa, but you can call me Red Dragon. Whatever. Do you have a shiny piece of a broken orb? Taja asks. Uh, yeah, says Chris Casamasa, tossing the shard to Taja. Magically, the two shards reunite into one piece. Um, what's going on? Asks Superstar Ho Sung Pak. Kung Lao explains the situation to them and gives them directions back to the trading post. The I love the idea that he's confused about this, but also wrote Book of Swords. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point, man. Pick a side, pick a side pal. Yeah, <laughs> Either fair. you're confused easily or you're not. <laughs> yeah. Kung Lao explains the situation to them and gives them directions back to the trading post. The, WM- the WMAC masters make their way towards the city with Scorpion while the combat crew continue With on. Scorpion? Yeah, he's been knocked out. They have to take him. So I kind of left that out. Uh, it'll make sense at the end, but basically everyone has to go back to the trading post. All right. Okay. This yeah, is an important yeah. mechanical detail. Yeah. 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 It's, I mean, it's not super. It's, you know. Well, just if, they, if the, he was being like malicious, you'd think they'd just beat his ass and leave him there. Well, I think, I imagine he's knocked out and they're dragging his body. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> In any case, he's been beaten. So the glowing orb fragment now takes the combat crew to one of the Korean camps where battle can be heard from far away a green clad woman is locked in battle with, with none other than Queen Vorpax herself you dare attack my warriors Vorpax says as she does cool sweeps and spin kicks like she did that one time we saw her fight who Bro, sent it, you It really quick it sucks that like literally a small part of my brain was like nice new four pack stuff like we didn't make it up <laughs> like, <laughs> like you know what i mean yeah like, I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> yeah <laughs> nobody sent me warrior i was simply searching for the swords of ilkhan and i arrived here uh, who cares look we needed to get Vorpax in here and zara from defenders of the realm is the closest analog do you even remember Zara from the I, I, re- I remember Zara, but like not in a way that this like means anything to me. It yeah. would be like if I was watching a movie and they did like a cameo reveal at the credits, but it was Zara and everybody right. would go, Woo. <laughs> who is that again? Remind me who that is. Why should I be excited about this? There's only one Vorpax. Ain't that the truth? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, from the other side of the camp, Mika is thrown through a tent. She scrambles to her feet as her opponent, (laughs) dressed in jean shorts and a Stars and Stripes bikini top and a cowboy hat, steps out. I was just beating up some pirates off my yacht. Fuck. Fuck Fuck you in this fucking voice. (laughs) I know, I'm I'm committing to it. I wrote it this way. It's so funny. I was just beating up some pirates on my yacht when suddenly I'm teleported to bumfuck nowhere and you attack me. (laughs) Listen, Missy. I don't want to fight you. Can't we settle this with a nice game of beach volleyball? You get the point. It's Tina from DOA. (laughs) (laughs) You get the point. Yeah. Anyway, the combat crew interrupts the battles, explain the situation, and send Vorpax, Zara, and Tina back to the trading post. You just ignored all the stuff that had to happen. (laughs) With Mika in Here's all the characters. They're going to go over here. (laughs) After taking their orb shards. All right. <clears throat> Later on, with four pieces of the orb in hand, the combat crew follow the beacon towards yet another piece. On their journey, Raiden pops in to check on their progress. Hey gang, while you were out getting holly in jolly, I found a bunch of pieces of the orb. One of them was brought to me by a very attractive and charismatic man named Jonathan Raven. Then this guy who I can't believe we're (laughs) glossing over the Raven part. I can't believe (laughs) that we're not doing two guys that talk like Raiden talking at each other. It's gonna come back. Relax. (laughs) 
<laughs> then this guy who looks kind of like an older Shang Tsung but said his name was Tai Wai Se dropped one off. <laughs> oh, and there was one from a guy named Lang, I think. He said he was after something called the Book of Swords. Raiden, you know, it's funny that we keep seeing these people who look like people we know but are different than them. Like, why aren't we running into another Taja or Omegis from another universe? Ciro asks. Maybe it doesn't work that way. Maybe each of us is destined to a specific fate, unique to our own universe, and there's only one version of each of us. There was certainly only one Genevieve. I miss her, I miss her so much. Dude, this is down says. horrific. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's because Mortal Kombat isn't about death. It's about life. And each life is as unique as the snowflakes falling on our heads right now, says Raiden. The crew notice that it's been lightly snowing, but getting heavier and heavier as they follow the signal. Then suddenly, the combat crew finds themselves at the Lin Kuei headquarters, where four Sub-Zeros are fighting. Specifically, it's Conquest Sub-Zero, Kwai Lang Sub-Zero from the end of the Malibu Mortal Kombat comics, Sub-Zero from Defenders of the Realm, and Bihan from Mortal Kombat Legacy. Before we figure out what happens in this fight, I want to ask you personally who you think yeah. would win. In that, Aside in, from whatever you wrote. Um, Defenders of the Realm, Sub-Zero, probably. You think so? He's designed to win. Right? The rest of them aren't really designed to win. They're designed to lose, if anything. Right. Yeah, they're designed to lose. But he, I mean, A, like, God, I can't believe I can't think of his voice actor um, uh, from 90210. Luke Perry? Luke Perry. Thank you. I was going to say Archie's dad from Riverdale. <laughs> that would have got me there, too. First of all, uh, Luke Perry voicing him gives him uh, major points, right? But also, yeah, he's he's designed to be the hero who survives. So, yeah, I think he'd win. What about you? I think I'm just too partial to the Conquest cast. That's fair. I think I think Conquest Sub Zero gives him a run for his money for sure. I also think he he's like, he seems easily overtaken by rage. Yeah, but he also he's kind of a good guy a little bit too, right? He sort of was coming over to their side a little. Yeah, yeah. He's got that fifty fifty split in him like Anakin sure. Skywalker had when he was cool. Totally. Well, I better be getting back to the trading post to keep an eye on things, says Raiden. Give my regards to the Zeros. Raiden poofs out of there. Boku no namai wa Sub-Zero, says the Japanese Sub-Zero from Legacy, as the other three Sub-Zeros, who are all kind of good guys, beat the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> you are evil, Iceman, and your frozen heart shall not taint this foreign earth. Not so long as Sub-Zero stands in your way, says the Sub-Zero from the comics, who got revealed but never got to be part of the story. What I said, I mean what he said, says Defenders of the Realm Sub-Zero. Ice kills, says Conquest Sub-Zero. Uh, Kung Lao shouts, hey, Sub-Zeros, three of you seem to be good guys. Can you go ahead and drag that fourth one back to the trading post and also give us any shards of an orb you might have? They do. The orb <laughs> is almost good. <laughs> this is uh, like methodical uh, storytelling. The, the orb is almost complete. <clears throat> Looks like we only need five more pieces, says Kung Lao. That might not be an accurate count. I had to change numbers around a bunch. Uh, they get another piece when Taja faces off against Rain from Blood Rain. Look, we haven't watched it for the show yet, but we will. So I can't really put in a thoughtful reference to it, except I think Rain is relatively a good person. So the fight is probably a misunderstanding, and she willingly goes back to the trading post. Looks like we only need four more pieces, says Kung Lao. <laughs> Uh, Raiden pops back in. I found two more pieces. One was in the possession of another Raiden. He's a real pain in the ass, though, and keeps calling himself the Thunderer and shit. And the other one oh, was walked in. Oh, that fucking asshole. <laughs> and the other one was walked in by Quan Chi and another Quan Chi. And that new Quan Chi from a different universe was very animated, get it, and kept talking all about his pet snakes. So please hurry up and find those last two pieces. There's a lot of people. What's the fire code capacity on the trading post? Uh, we've definitely exceeded it at this point. <laughs> and, we're not, and we're not done yet. <laughs> Cut to Shang Tsung walking in the woods when he comes across an older Japanese man in a long black trench coat and vest with long hair fighting a handsome man with amazing feathered hair wearing a dirty tank top and baggy pants. For those of you who don't get it yet, this is Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa Shang Tsung fighting Robin Sho Liu Kang. Bruce Lock Shang Tsung jumps right into the fight. Nice jacket, old man, he says to the other Shang as he Bro. roundhouse kicks. <laughs> Robin Show right in the hair. That's an interesting voice for that guy. <laughs> You'll acquire it soon enough. I'd recognize my past self anywhere, says the older Shang Tsung. Wait, you're me and I'm you? Young Shang asks. 
That's right. Consider this fight a taste of things to come. This is the great Kung Lao's descendant we are fighting. I am the descendant of the great Kung Lao, exclaims Robin Sho Liu Kang. Then you will die, both Shangs say in unison. Look, I'm tired. It's 1125. Let's just say Liu Kang from Defenders of the Realm shows up, so it's two on two. Somebody wins. And the two Liu Kangs win the fight just as the combat crew show up. The final two shards of the orb are collected and the whole gang heads back to the trading post. Uh, with all these extra, with all these Shang songs and Luke Hangs in tow. All right. Now back at the trading post, the Raidens, Jonathan Raven, the Quan Chi's, and the Shang songs consult each other and the orb, while the rest of the crowd enjoy festive punch, cookies, and Zhu Zhenmis songs all around the Zhu Zhenmis bush. Tina Armstrong looks at Robin Show Luke Kang and says, "You look familiar. Are you a pirate?" Jonathan Raven eyes Tai Wai Se up and down. Remember, because Kari Hiroyuki Tagawa was also in the Raven pilot. Ho Sung Pak, superstar Ho Sung Pak, Liu Kang, and animated Liu Kang all high five the fuck out of each other, etc. <laughs> also, I'm now realizing that I left out any reference to Poison Ivy 3, so let's say Cabral and Greg Vaughn's character Michael are arm wrestling or something. Sure, that's fine. Well, Taja, it looks like you got your Zhu Zhenmis party after all, says Kung Lao, as the three toast to the holidays for bringing everyone together. I just wish Jen were here. I miss her so much. Bro, if Jen does not show up in this story, this man's gonna, <laughs> gonna die. <laughs> he's, he's not gonna make it to the end of the eight pages. People, people, can I have your attention? Conquest Raiden asks, but nobody quite's down to listen to him. Silence! You all must listen to Raiden, so says I. Raiden, the Thunderer, exclaims comic book Raiden. But still, nobody gives them their attention. That's awesome, because I wouldn't listen to that fucking guy either. <laughs> Jonathan Raven whistles. <laughs> the entire room quiets down and turns their attention <laughs> to Raiden and the Raidens. Raven and the Raidens? <laughs> Raven and the Raidens, yeah. That's awesome! <laughs> See how easy life can be, Jonathan Raven says before turning the floor over to Conquest Raiden. Dashing, dancing, and prancing, are we? Jeff Meek Raiden says. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> okay, folks. I know this is a confusing time for all of us, but we've consulted all of our mystical knowledge, and we know what to do. Bringing the orb back together was only step one. In order to reverse the summoning effects, we must all also uh, join as well. Do you mean by fucking? Asks Chris Casamasa. <laughs> Why is he asking that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Finally, of all the people Adani you could make say that. Why? <laughs> of all Quan the people Chi. you could make say that, you made it the two real guys. <laughs> Sorry, it's Adani Maropa's Quan Chi specifically. <laughs> What's fucking? Asks all of the Liu Kings. <laughs> like in unison like. yeah <laughs> no no not by copulation we must all join lips with our other selves under the light of the orb somebody get the ladder says jeff meek raiden moments later with the orb set atop the the jujen miss shrub and everybody grouped off by similarity it's smoochin time taja and rain kiss vorpax and zara kiss the quan chis use a lot of tongue Keller runs his fingers through Ciro's long hair and pulls him in close as they smooch. This is a crazy conclusion to this. <laughs> the Raidens and Jonathan Raven get busy, etc. As the four Sub-Zeros lock lips, a gentle snowfall fills the sky. Soon, everybody is kissing. Everybody except Kung Lao. Jen, I miss you so much. I'm so lonely. <laughs> this poor man. And I'm still missing my boot. Suddenly. He's going to get hit in the face of the boot. Suddenly, a handsome prince walks through the doors, boot in hand. Oh my god, Neil, this is a really genuinely good reveal. <laughs> I know I made the joke earlier that he might show up, but the bit, the prestige that you've just pulled off with him missing a boot for the entire story is my like truly exceptional. Is Prince Charming, and I believe this is yours, he sings as he kneels in front of Kung Lao, extending the boot. <laughs> Dumb. This is awesome. <laughs> Kung Lao slides his foot in. It's a perfect fit. Fuck you. <laughs> Prince Charming stands up. 
he and Kung Lao embrace in a magical kiss that causes the orb to glow ten times brighter than it has been. In one magical moment, a flash of light fills the courtyard, and when it clears, only Conquest, Shang Tsung, Quan Chi, Raiden, Vorpax, Mika, Scorpion, Sub-Zero, Kung Lao, Siro, Taja, and Taja remain. I think that's all of them. That's still so many people. <laughs> The orb has vanished as well, hurtling back through the multiverse to cause chaos for the River for the Riverdale gang or something. Well, there's no reason to head home so early on this magical Zhujin Miss Night, Kung Lao says, breaking the silence. Hey, Quan Chi, Vorpax, Mika, Shang, Sub Zero, and Scorpion, why don't you stay and help us finish this punch and these cookies? Feels like they could have said, "Hey, everyone." <laughs> <laughs> they do. They do stay, and nobody fights. They even all make snowmen together. The end. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, dude. Um, uh, I will say, I earnestly feel that um, you've really got like <laughs> the the characterization down, and I'm not joking. Like, it's silly, and it's, like, dumb, of course, right? right. But, like, <laughs> I do feel like there is a truth to the way people are behaving that I think, I think, I think got, just I think genuinely... I think Yeah, but yeah. I think, like, yeah, it really does communicate a sense of, like, I know who these people are right. that uh, does make it, like, genuinely a lot more entertaining than it would otherwise be for it to feel, <laughs> like, pretty on point. Um, also, the fucking reveals... <laughs> that was a that was non that was non-stop it was relentless some of them and, you know i mean some of them i just had to get in there right sure but, but dude the boot <laughs> the boot <laughs> reveal is fucking crazy that, i'll be honest that was a last minute addition so and, smart but I, were, you, I, I, were you like proud of yourself when you came up with that one you were like, well seriously i got to the end so i had the part about kung lao kicking the orb already right yeah but not losing a boot Okay, but right, I got you just to kicked the end. it like a guy would kick a boot <laughs> or an orb. I had attempted uh, to work in either novel Kung Lao or Mark DeCasco's Kung Lao, but I just couldn't get there. So I was like, damn, I'm at the end of this and everyone's kissing except for Kung Lao. He doesn't have anyone to kiss, right? And then it hit you. I, uh, I have to get the prince in here. And I went back and I added Kung Lao losing a boot. <laughs> it's a really smart bit. <laughs> But that was the last thing I came up with. It's like, a smart genuinely. bit because it didn't hit me immediately when he lost the boot. Yeah. Like I mentioned it in passing when everyone started coming up, but I did not include the boot. You'll notice. Right. Sure, so I did. It, yes. it was initially lost on me that the boot was going to be the crucial part of that reveal. No, I'm pretty proud of that one. <laughs> yeah, it was good. <laughs> um, yeah, man. That's it. It's definitely Mary... something that's like mostly for us. Mary Zhu miss everybody. <laughs> Get your bush, bro. That's it. That is our, that is the last. I think the last Mortal Kombat and Conquest inspired uh, holiday themed fan fiction I will be writing for the podcast. The famous last words. True. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe inspiration will hit me again in the future. But well, this I feel idea like didn't come to me until we were shit talking multiverses last episode. And you were like, "What if we did one?" I was like, oh, "Of course, we have to." I feel like I owe it to everybody to try to do this. Sure. <laughs> Just to see what happens. I would love to. I would love a a a Cory a Cory verse. I uh, I'm, I'm sure I've told you about this, but I famously, uh, famously. It's only if I've told you about it. There's a <laughs> podcast that I really like. It no longer exists, but they essentially like gave each other two prompts and just had to write stories that included those prompts. But anything else about it could be like whatever they wanted to do. Okay. That's and fun. Uh, I always enjoyed that as a premise. Because uh, yeah. they just like built worlds where the stories happened and then they included those two things. And nice. I, I never have taken a crack at that, but it seems like a, this seems like as good an excuse as any. What do you what do you want to theme yours after? Oh, I don't want to call that too early because then okay. I then it becomes real. So but, whenever. All right. So whenever you get the itch. We'll yeah, because I don't do I, like, I don't want to commit to doing it right now because then. Right. That's it, fair. You know, it might be bad because I'll force it, but I, I should do it. Even if it's uh, a year down the line, that'll pop up in this feed. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to write it when I'm 30. So that's in what, 20 years? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. absolutely right. Um, God, that's a lot of pain for hosting. <laughs> hey, man. Merry Christmas. We, we did it, Joe. Merry Jujin Miss. Merry Jujin Miss. Happy holidays to everyone. And to all you at home, cuddled up by the fire with your loved ones listening to this. 
and jokes aside about like uh not really feeling the vibe but if if i'm not i hope you are at the very least um yeah. that there's more of a holiday spirit by the time you hear this i hope this helped yeah right, right? it helped me if you're not sure. into christmas hopefully you're at least into kissing uh, yeah a lot of kissing um that's just what jujin miss is all yeah. about <laughs> it is a jujin miss tradition at this point it's mostly about kissing your friends a lot of, a lot of smooching or your <laughs> doppelgangers or your enemies Oh, that's right. Yeah, we we made uh, Kung Lao and Shang Tsung kiss last year, or last one. Oh, damn, I knew I forgot to do something this time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, man, I think the, the, uh, we should shut it down so I can get this edited and out before Christmas. Yeah, I'm right? sure you can manage. Yeah, but I got to add like some some sound design and you know yeah. sound effects and things. You can take out any dumb stuff. Uh, happy holidays, everyone. We will be back. Uh, in the new year we got to hit that more combat album we're getting that schedule set up and right around the corner jeff rovenstock i gotta start reading that book <laughs> yeah right jesus <laughs> it snuck up on me so until next time yeah that's good man they got reverb on that thing like crazy <laughs> <laughs>